We all know Jake Paul's fights are all bought out. His brother and his cousin. <laughs> Who did he beat? Like, yeah. how did he get chose? Yeah, if you're watching wild. this, bro, just delete your IG. Stay <laughs> off social media for at least six months. Yeah, so All right, boys, y'all yeah, heard last week and the week before that, there was a lot of talk about Andrew Tate. He got banned from YouTube. He got banned from uh, pretty much all the social Instagram medias and, and things that, like that. Yeah. Uh, he popped up on Rumble, had like 100,000 views his first time. Wait, what's Rumble? <laughs> Honestly, it's like some, I don't know if it's an offshore website or what it is, but pretty much it's kind of like where you can do whatever you want. There's no rules. You can't get kicked off, but, uh, you know, he's not getting. Like Patreon, right? So, sounds, like, like Patreon, sounds like yeah. it was made in Romania. <laughs> right, yeah. he made that. So, no, I mean, I heard he was banned off of video games and stuff. It was getting bad yeah. at some point. <laughs> he couldn't even play Minecraft. Yeah. I swear to God, he couldn't log into anything, bro. Yeah. People were hating on him, but. I just don't understand why. I feel like a lot of the people that are hating on them, they're just trying to play into like a woman's role. They're trying to be like, yeah. sound like the good guy so the girls love I mean, him or something, you know? He says some stuff that makes sense, but he also says a lot of stuff. It's like. You so know, you, you're like, telling yeah. me you don't agree with a lot of what he says? Yeah, I probably only agree with like 10% of the things he says. 10%? Uh, what the yeah. like, I I'll, mean, I'll, I would say 70%, yeah. 30% is. Like, yeah, I don't really listen to him that much either. All right, look, we could go around and we'll start off with what we agree with and then what we don't agree with, right? I'll, I'll say I agree with when he said uh, he won't ever let a woman fly the plane. I'm, I'm personally not the biggest fan of heights and things like that. So if I knew that, you know, this 28 year old woman is standing there telling me welcome to this plane and i know she's controlling the plane i wouldn't feel comfortable on a 10-hour flight knowing exactly. this 28 year old woman's uh, flying the plane well i mean yeah. now just like he said when it comes to men if i have a two-year-old baby and i go to a daycare and this daycare is full of jacked up muscular looking men i wouldn't trust my baby in a daycare full of grown-ass men that lift weights because i know their tempers could be snapped easily and they might not have the nicest Right. Uh, you know, control around my kids and things like that. So there is a, a side for women and men. I agree with that. See, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I agree with that for sure. But I just don't, I don't really understand what women want when it comes to this equality bullshit that they're talking about. I don't understand where they're drawing the line. Because, yeah. like, they want it all the way up until it's not convenient for them. Yeah, literally. So, like, whenever I see him arguing about, like, you know, women want equal routes for this and this and this, but then they don't want to be coal miners and this and that. Mm -hmm. I agree with that, man. Like you, I, I agree with damn near 90% of what he says. I agree with that. I'm on the complete opposite I agree with that. Because, because there's a lot of men that are pussies too, bro. You know what many. I mean? There is. And that's, yeah, what makes really. the, and that's what makes the woman kind of have that power. But that's why, like, no offense from where Andrew Tate is, Romania and stuff like that. It's a whole bunch of grown-ass men that are built for business. They're built for, you know, doing all the hard work, doing the hard labor when they get home. Their woman is there to treat them, take care of them, and Cook do things like that. And it's a 50-50 yeah. partnership. Yeah. The man's going to provide, make sure you're good. The woman's going to treat you good when you come home, make sure you're taken care of, and the love is still there. I feel like here in the United States, a lot of times you have where they both go to work, they both come home at the same time, and if the woman ends up getting paid more than the uh, man, now the woman feels like she's empowered to a little bit more. And that, over the last decade, that's raised the bar where it's like we're head on, head on. It's like a competition like with... Competing. And, you know, no offense to women. Women are great at so many things and possibly even better than men. I just feel like it shouldn't be a competition where you're always chasing to be either neck to neck with the man or one step above. The man should be the protector. You know what I mean? The, you should want to, when somebody's breaking into the, your home, you want to hide behind your man. You want your man to man up. You don't want to be equal to him where it's like, we're both going to go shoot. We're both going to go exactly. risk like You want lives. him to protect you in that aspect, and you also want him to be... Um like the way the way he protects you physically is the same way you should want him to protect you financially, in my opinion. Yeah. It's like you want this man to take care of you, get you no matter anything you want. You want him to be able to get that for you. You want him to be able to protect you physically. You want all the things that a man can do for you. You want him to be able to do it. So that's what I'm saying. Like I don't agree with the whole like equality, 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 and then it just they cut it off whenever it's inconvenient for him. Yeah. It makes no sense. And we love women. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we love Shit. women. We're just like, we're just trying to paint a picture that women deserve, like, women, look, women deserve to be loved. I don't want you working your ass off like I do. You know what I mean? Like, we go through some shit. Right. I don't want you to compete where you're like, well, I want to go through some shit. Why do both of us need to go yeah. through some shit? Yeah. Let like, me go through the bullshit. You stay at home. 
you don't even have to stay at home. Do something, you know. Go what do I mean? a hobby. Go, go, go play have tennis. Fun. Go have fun. Make it feel like all this work I'm doing is for a reason, bro. Yeah, don't make yeah, like why, yeah. what am I working hard for if you're working hard as well? And then now we both come home tired as fuck at six, seven p.m. And then now all this hard work we're doing is for nothing. I, I want to be able to feel like I'm working yeah. hard for you. For my kids, for my family, you know what I mean? Like, what the fuck is your quality for? Like, well, point? you're at work. Like, well, you're at work, and she's at home doing nothing. Go do some yoga or some Pilates uh, or some yeah, shit yeah, like that. Go we'll take the kids out. Yeah. The one thing I would say though is like, you know, y'all are Bosnian. You all have a different mentality when it comes to that. Like, a lot of Americans, a lot of men don't see themselves in having to like really step into that role. You know, to like, I'm in charge. I'm gonna make sure you're good. A lot of guys are just living their life, and they expect their women to just do the things they want for free. So that's where, like, right. American women kind of have a different mentality with that because it's, like, it's not taught. I mean, some people do, but it's not just, like, everybody knows. As a man, you're going to take care of your family. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. And then a woman, she's going to do this. You're going to do that. So that's where there's a lot of, like, blurred like There is a very blurred line right yeah. there. I have 100%. noticed that with a lot of American people, all of them divorced. Yeah. All of them divorced. Yeah. Because they don't know what they want from each other halfway through the relationship. They right. don't understand. Whenever they got into it, it was cool. You're working, I'm working, we come home, we have our little fun together, you know, two, three years into the relationship, y'all still actually enjoy fucking each other. All yeah. the things are still cool. The next thing you know, your sex life goes down, yep. y'all still working, not seeing each other, she starts having a fucking boyfriend at work that she's more comfortable with. And then All she, ends, and then she ends up cheating on you with a guy like Andrew Tate. Exactly. Yeah. No. And then she goes out <laughs> with her friends, and then here we are. <laughs> Full circle moment. You know oh, I mean? God. But I do want to switch topics over and talk a little bit about Jake Paul. Uh, a lot of rumors going around that he's possibly fighting Anderson Silva. I don't know if that's been confirmed I did see that. yet. I did see that. That's one fight I don't want to see. I don't want him fighting Anderson Silva. You don't want to Silva. see that? Why not? I just don't feel like Anderson Silva's in his prime. I feel like if you're going to fight somebody, you need a Nate Diaz. You need a... A, a Conor McGregor would have been a bigger fight, right? Uh, 100%. But Conor... But you know, the thing I is, think Conor destroys Why Jake. are you fighting a 50-year-old? You're talking all this crap about, oh, I'm a good boxer, this and that. You know, I'm ready to go pro. But then you're fighting a 50-year-old. I don't see it that way. I think Anderson Silva can still fight. Do you think that was his best fight? No. Mm. As far as Jake Paul, uh, as far as the fights he could have chosen, as far as the lineups, because it was pretty much like an open book, right? You you can pick who you want to fight at this point. And if he could have picked the perfect person to fight, I don't think Anderson Silva is the perfect fight. Yeah. I feel like that's just a fight for him to get his fight off, get it off his list, and move on because he's training for yeah. such a long time. He wants to go out, party, drink, but he can't until he completes this fight. So it's almost like, all right, I don't know who to fight, Anderson Silva. Let's just do it so I can get it over with. Is think, boxing still? Yeah, he's still boxing. I think the biggest fight he can possibly make right now is him and KSI. I can't lie to you. 100%. That, that's literally 100%. England oh, versus yeah. America to the max. 100 That's the biggest pay-per-view fight right Literal, now. I think that would that's literally, like out of any athlete, any like no matter oh, who yeah. fights right now, I think that's the biggest pay-per-view. Th yeah, go ahead. I think that would be biggest pay-per-view in history. It might be, bro. That's literally all. I'm of not gonna lie. And, like, I think a lot that of American be, kids, yeah. bro. Biggest like, pay-per-view in history. Of course, because of the subscribers, the YouTube subscribers, yeah. IG, everybody. Like, it's the social media would be fighting there. I think that's the best fight you can make right now. Doesn't matter. I want Jake Paul to win that fight. All KSI has to do is not get knocked down in the first couple rounds. Oh, KSI will win good the fight. fight. If KSI loses in the seventh round, eighth round, puts up a good fight, it's a win-win for both. Both sides, because people don't people don't uh, predict that KSI is going to win that fight. That's from the American side. I think a yeah, lot of the KSI is going to win. Really? I oh, see, KSI I will KSI win. Winning. I say KSI winning too. KSI got in shape. He yeah, got in he's really in good shape. Fight. He looks good and his, trying to run a little Jake bit. Ball is he, slow, dude, though. He, did you see he fought two people in the same night? Last Saturday. Yeah, I saw the professional boxer. Honestly, I'd bet my life I'd beat that guy up. Yeah, I could <laughs> confidently say I'd beat you know that I mean? too. Yeah, lie. but that's me saying as well. I think I'm taking Jay Paul out within three rounds after a year of training. I ain't gonna lie. Oh yeah, honestly, anybody that gets a year of training, it, I feel like it's fair game. You give you me anybody here, give us one year of training with like a top professional, with like let's say Floyd Mayweather training me or you for a year. Well, you gotta be Jay Floyd. Paul, we're going. Yeah, it's, it's fair game. I swear, I swear to you, I, I'm taking him out. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. We honestly. all know Jake Paul's fights are all bought out. No, they're not. Oh, 100%. No. I don't think they're rigged. I think they're no. real fights. Definitely rigged. But I, I think the KSI shit was rigged. Fighting two people in one night, bro? Come on. I mean, I mean that the type of people he was fighting, though. Yeah, that was oh, bullshit. The, he yo, the second guy complained more than he threw hits. Yeah, I don't even... <laughs> yeah. I think he had like nine complaints, and, uh, yeah. nine complaints and landed seven hits, bro. <laughs> I don't even know how he got into <laughs> the, the ring. Fight, like, yeah. how did he get chose? You know like, he has two wins? Did they find him on Indeed? Something? I don't know, bro. That, that, that guy's just horrible, bro. Yeah, if you're watching awful. this, bro, just delete your IG. Stay <laughs> off social media for at least six months. Yeah, so, I don't know, man. Go oh. into a 
I, I don't know where I they found know, that guy, bro, away. but that's that, that that's a punching bag. That's Elvis, you know he has two wins, right? Two wins, bro. That's wins. probably who the uh, fuck who did he beat? His brother and his cousin. Who did he beat? I need answers. Who did he beat? Who beat this guy? Yo, later we'll pull it up on YouTube to see who were the two wins with this guy, bro. No, I mean he definitely beat like. A disabled like vet from <laughs> Vietnam or something. I don't yeah. know. He had to fight somebody in a wheelchair. Nope. I don't know. Like I said, but. Nate Robinson would have beat this guy up. Yeah. Ben oh. Askren would have beat this guy up. I don't know. Ben can't throw a punch save. Yo, man. Ben does look like a Walmart grocery stock. I'm not gonna lie, bro. <laughs> bro ben Askren looked like the guy that walks up and down the aisle selling popcorn at the fight, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, we love you, bro. He's not but a good dog. Just, <laughs> he's not yeah, to put up the gloves, bro. Yeah, man. I mean, you get back in the, in the octagon, but... So I feel like with Jake Paul, bro, most of his fighting uh, success started off by him being underestimated. He was. Yeah, you know, he really yeah. was. Uh, ben Askren fight, people should have known, like, yo, Jake Paul's coming in, bro. Ben Askren isn't really like that anymore. I don't know. Who the fuck let him choose Ben Askren, bro? I don't know, I had, bro. I'm not going to lie. I had never heard of that dude until he Ben Askren? I had never heard of him. Oh, no, I, thought, I heard he was cold back in his day. Well, he was I, heard he was, I heard he was cold at UFC. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I heard he was good at UFC, but I had so never heard of him. Until he got knocked the fuck out by Jorge. Oh, yeah. my Oh, God. I do remember that. <laughs> what about the Tyron Woodley fight? When Jake Paul came in against Tyron Woodley, I honestly thought dude, Tyron Woodley was going to That was just kind of some bullshit. I ain't going to lie to you, I, was hoping, I'm I hoping. lost a lot of respect for Tyrone after that. Yeah, yeah. Bro, a lot of people did. The man people. wouldn't swing, bro. He wouldn't swing. Yeah, he was. Uh, he literally hit Jake, put him on the ropes, and then just backed up. Yeah, yeah if he, you put the guy yeah, on the Jake ropes, bro, you swing at him. Yeah, yeah go Jake for him. Brought. Yeah. Bro, speaking of fighting, though, did y'all see the fights today? Uh, Sal right. showed me one of the fights that the, the guy, what's his name, got lost, bro. Oh, Cyril Gaon and Tuivasa? Oh, yeah. yeah. Tuivasa lost, bro. Yeah, that, that broke bro. my heart. Bro, I felt bad you. for him. No beer at the shoot today. <laughs> like, I, I, <laughs> that's crazy. I thought he was still going to do it. No, out of all the people in the UFC, that was probably the most heartbreaking loss I've seen. Yeah. I, mean, like, I have a lot of really, like, top favorite guys. Seeing him lose, that really hurt. Yeah, well, I love him too, bro. He's always my favorite when I watch the fights. Yeah. He brings the energy, bro. He's always lit. Yeah. It's insane. That was one of those yeah. fights where it just kind of hit different, like seeing a man like that get beat up, because I always feel like he has a good heart, bro. He's a good guy, bro. I mean, guy. no dick riding, though. I sound like I'm dick much. <laughs> no, bro, but, like, said you were seriously, running. though, like, whoa. Well, pause. 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 <laughs> we're, just, we're, no. No, we're just saying we're, we're on the same page. Yeah, I appreciate you understanding where I'm coming from. <laughs> but, nah, man, that was, that was heartbreaking. Even Robert. Robert Whitaker, his performance was kind of mid. I'm not well, going to lie. fight? Vittori? Yeah, you yeah, remember the Vittori like... fight against uh, Adesanya, bro? Adesanya could have had a phone in one hand checking his IG. And <laughs> no, literally. <laughs> literally know, know, bro. Oh, he, the other guy fought Vittori? Yeah. You remember his garbage. Bro, remember everybody that. remembers Vittori from the fight with uh, Adesanya, bro. But Adesanya was fake laughing, haha, this, yeah. that, like mocking him, bro. I mean, that was disrespectful. I can't even lie to you. I don't think Vittori stands a chance in the ring with too many people. I don't even know how he's top five ranked. I can't even lie to you. Now, me personally, if I step in the ring with him, I don't want none of that. Maybe after a year of training. <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait for the Hamzat that man, fight, that bro. Like that year of training, bro. Anything, you no, anything's possible. I swear to God, anything's <laughs> possible. I swear to you, bro. I swear oh, yeah. to you. I get it down. I can already wrestle. So Who's I, the main event tonight? Oh, they already fought, bro. They it fought, bro. It was, in, it was in Paris. The main event was at like 4 p.m. or something. Yeah. yeah. When does Nate Diaz fight? Next week, bro. Next week. Saturday. He's fighting Hamza, bro. Yeah, he's oh. fighting Hamza. Chimaev. Yo, we got to do like a live uh, pod. Something, bro. We got to do a live pod to yeah. that one. Shout out game. Hamza, as, bro. As we watch the fight. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a lot of mixed emotions for me because I really like Nate, but Hamza, he's like one of my favorites right now. Yeah, yeah. Hamza. So I, but you remember, you remember what Nate Diaz did to Edwards, bro? He slapped the piss out of him. That was crazy. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> and pointed at him. He could have ran up and finished the fight, but he took the time to point at him. That was, yeah, that was a spell. It, it was, bro. But that's what makes Nate Diaz who he is, bro. Those yeah. are the moments where you just love to see. 100%. I mean, I, I really want to see Nate fight Connor again, really. I feel like that would have been a great stepping stone for Connor since he's been on a losing streak. Yeah. When is Connor coming back? Is he coming back? He has one more oh, fight when he comes back. I see. I see. I saw he, he comes back, loses one more, he's done, bro. Yeah, then I he's done. I saw his IG, he was getting head from his girl, bro. Yeah. I saw oh, yeah, I did see that. Yeah, he, he posted, posted a video. video. Getting head from his girl mm -hmm. on his yacht. Yeah. On his yacht. Like, he was posting think. the view, and then, like, you can just see a head pop up, and then he, like, pushes it back down, and then it pops up again, and he keeps pushing it back to the side. Now, I'm not hating, but... That neck was not moving a lot. Connor, I don't know what you're working with, <laughs> but that was crazy. All right, that was... It was, like, that that was, was his main lady, like his baby mama? Yeah, no, yeah. His, his wife, bro. Damn. She do got a little stiff neck, though. Damn. She has stiff know, neck. Bro. I don't know about posting your baby moms like that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's crazy. It's different man. if it's like a thought or something, but your yeah. baby moms, like, it is how are you going to feel, bro, if your, your own child watches that, you know, 15 years from now? Stuff you put out doesn't go down. You know oh, he's going to think, shit, my dad a pimp. You
Yo. Sayo. <laughs> like I said, it's different when it's a thought, bro. Yeah. Like, look at Kim Kardashian's kids. Oh, I feel <laughs> bad for <laughs> that. Bro, see Kanye's started man. with Ye. Oh. Man. That man, man Ye. He was ass. on her ass. Full Head support talk. of that Ye. Boy, that boy Ye said, hey, Pete, how's it having my, uh, how are my uh, kids' names tattoos doing in the trauma yeah, center? Man, I said, said whoa. Oh. He was oh. shipping for that. Yo, that, yo, that hit Pete in the heart. Yo, first of all, is, that, uh, is, it, is there anybody that's not a Ye fan? I'm not a Ye fan, but I'm on his side for this. I'm on his side for I'm this, I'm not too. a big fan of his music. I don't know what it is. No, not Ye. music, but just, like, his personality and oh, him yeah. as a person. Oh, yeah. and, you know all them people mean, calling like, him crazy bullshit. Go ahead, Ye. No, that man, ahead, that man does need medicine. He doesn't be taking it. So, like... No, for <laughs> no, no, wait, no, you no, think no. he's, like... Yeah, I think ah, there. No, nah, I don't think he's like crazy, but I think that his medication would help him stabilize a little of bit. Of course, you know, he wouldn't just be posting random shit like I that. I don't think he's crazy, are, bro. Yeah. I think it's just all part of a show. Like he's just doing it to do it no, to entertain the people. Bro. Yeah, you can tell some of the stuff he's saying and how he's saying it. Like, imagine, right? We look at Jay Z, and Jay Z's like a god to the youth, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine if okay, Jay Z yeah. was just going off sideways like Ye does. You know, you'd almost lose this, not respect, respect yeah. but you almost look at him in a different way. But yeah. I mean, if another dude gets your kid's name tattooed on him, bro. Yeah, that was weird, bro. That's, that's, that was that's weird. Dude. Hope wouldn't act up like this. He'd handle it where you'd be like, damn, bro. That's let me, let me pay, move. let me pay for the tattoo removal. That's a boss move. You know what I mean? Like, so it's All like, right. I feel like they should have did more boss shit. He was just crying about Kim 24 seven. Remember yeah. that? So she's over here sleeping with this. Joker. <laughs> Batman versus and Joker. You're, and you're over here, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, uh, I want my family back. I want this back. No, bro, you gotta boss up. Like, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, he, he ain't had to make it all public, but I'm still Team yeah. Yay, I ain't gonna lie. Oh, Team Yay, bro. Kids gotta she go. Them dirty. But that's kind of messed up, though, bro. bro. Three days a week. Like, you can't, like, is two days. like right. Kim can't get with Pete, and then, like, you say act on boss shit and just ye to go just, like, oh, fuck them kids. You just can't say fuck your kids. Ooh. Yeah. Like, yeah, you can't just, you know, like how you're saying boss up, like, he can't just say, oh, fuck my kids, I don't want them no more. Oh, he's fighting for the kids. Well, that's what I'm saying, but you're saying I can't boss shit. You're, you're, you're saying for him not to do it. Well, yeah, I'm just saying the, way, he he's, the way he's doing it yeah. on social media, I feel like he should just wa watch his wording, perfect, perfect it a little bit more. I feel like he's posting it as fast as it's coming to okay. him. Yeah. So he should be more professional with it. A, a little bit more okay. where it's like, well, you got to know, you know, 30 million people are watching what you say. Put it together where it looks smooth, where it looks nice, where it looks like the way it should look from a billionaire yeah. like What are you doing in that situation, Jay? Situation with some dude dating my wife? I mean, first of all, like... <laughs> Come on, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. No, I mean... Wait, you what are, situation are you talking about? Uh, like, yeah, pretty situation. much, yeah. You're right, you're right, yeah. I mean, situation. like, for me... First of all, I feel like him acting like this is what got them to break up in the first place. I ain't gonna yeah, lie. he's probably acting like this the whole time. Yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah, okay. because, I mean, I know he dropped a song a while ago talking about, I'm not taking my meds anymore. He said something like that, bro. <laughs> and then ever since then, like, she's been going downhill, you know? So, like, but if I was him, like, if he really wants to get back with Kim, yeah, I wouldn't do it publicly. Like, I would keep that shit, like, away from the public. And then the public would just be like, oh, they're back together, you know? Like, uh, like what I think JG would do. He would just speak to her on the side, like, hey, like, blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Like, but he wouldn't be posting shit or trying to get, like, views or reactions from that shit. You know what I'm saying? I would try to act like that. I, just, I think Kanye's so ahead of his time, man. I don't think, think so? he really gives a fuck. Yeah, I, he doesn't. He doesn't. I think he's really doing this as a marketing scheme, like. 100%. Yeah, like, I'm going to get my impressions off this, you know? It might be that. It really... I don't know what it is, bro. Did you but. see when he went off on the on the, the Gap people? He was at that board meeting with Gap, and he just started going off on them? I didn't see that. What did he do? Uh, he the, started going off on them about, like, the Yeezy collection that he dropped with Gap. And they did something with the, the stuff. I don't know. He just started going off on them in the board meeting. Just yeah, yelling he, at he, them. He they, they, they copied his shirt pretty much. Like, so he had the, the Gap Yeezy Balenciaga collab with the, for the Gap shirts, right? Uh, right. And then Gap went and pretty much dropped the same shirt that looks just like them, but it was only with Gap. So they copied it. Adidas did the same thing with the Yeezy slides. They dropped something similar with the same color and everything, but it was just the Adidas. So it's like there's multiple situations where these brands are copying his style without giving him his credit for it. Yeah. So it's like he's finally had enough. But I feel like even that, like, he just has to find better ways to go about it. Because it's like there's six months ago, he's so proud to have this partnership with Gap and be a part of it and this and that. Six months later, you're on IG just blowing them up, this right. and that. So it's like eventually now you have these other brands looking at you like, well, I don't know if I really want to yeah. work with you like yeah. that because I don't want to be the next one to get put on blast. Yeah. There has to be a better way to 
come together behind closed doors without you just airing them out publicly. Yep. You know, things could be fixed, but I feel like he just runs straight to IG. And I do feel like it's hurting his business as long as he's trying to partner up with people. I agree. Once he wants to do things on his own, then you can only hurt your own business. And I don't think like he can ever hurt Yeezy as a brand. Right. Well, didn't he learn from the first time it happened? Like next time you work with the brand, make a contract. You can't release any products that are similar to ours that were in the collaboration. That's fucking yay, bro. That's what he wants. I just don't get why you need a gap. Why, just yeah. do an yeah, easy Balenciaga need... collab. Why yeah. do you need a gap even in there? Maybe oh, it was needed... easy Balenciaga and gap? And yeah. gap. I don't That's know. a weird collab. Hey man, it's yay. It's, it's yay. He does what he wants, bro. Yeah. It's yay, man. He's going. It's going. It's yay. His way into niggas not like him anymore. He bro. is going <laughs> to his way into that, but yeah. I don't know. I'd man. be I'd be down for a Yeezy North Face collab. That shit would be crazy. That would be clean. Bro. Yeah, Gucci With North Face collab is nice. Easy North Face collab, wears, bro, he could pull Yeezy North Face collab sure. would be ooh Yeezy Montclair collab. I don't think he has any problems, man. I just no, think he's a genius. I, yeah, I do too, bro. I think he just says whatever comes to his mind, and he doesn't really give a fuck what people think about him after. Oh, yeah, no yeah. sense. You know, people like us, we're probably talking about it and giving different opinions and ideas, but I personally think he just tweets and goes about his day or, you know, put, posts it, and he's over here. And the, he has so much shit going on that he's in the studio making music or producing or doing so many other things that he's not really there focused on what people are thinking about. Yeah, it's like, he posts it and doesn't probably think twice of what he just posted. You know what I mean? Right. It's like what Andrew Tate said. Remember, he's like, who's going to cancel me? I'm never on the internet. I say what I say and I go by my day. I have my businesses that I deal with. No, I mean, 100%. You know, uh, that might that be what Ye is thinking. Blocked, that's what Ye is thinking, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he did end up blocked on everything. Yeah, he did, bro. But that's kind of crazy, bro, how all those companies came together. They, they're probably on a conference call. So we're going to ban them today. I mean, it's literally like it was Facebook owns Facebook and Instagram. Twitter, right. and then like TikTok, right? That's right. Like three oh, yeah. Everybody banned him, bro. He goes to Walmart. They're like, we're not scanning your shit. <laughs> <laughs> this man is banned from it. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, man. What uh, about the Bugatti? What, 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 what color is your Bugatti? What color is your Bugatti? <laughs> nah, I mean. Jay, what are you, what are you doing? If, if you're Andrew Tate, bro, what kind of life are you living, bro? Bro. What I direction mean, are you taking it in, bro? Do you think he lives the life he portrays? I honestly think he lies a little bit. I'm not going to lie. Just... The way he tries so hard to be an internet personality, there has to be some lies to what he's saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. But well, I mean, he was um, trending on TikTok the past uh, week. He was in Croatia, had the whole yacht run it out. They were there out there for a week, supermodels and everything. You know, so I watched a movie on Netflix. It was about a Twinder swindler. Y'all, y'all ever seen that? I ain't oh, seen the it. Tinder swindler? I just gotta see it, bro. Yeah. Bro, yeah. this man lived his life just scamming one person to the next, and he always portrayed he was rich as fuck. Like, he always, like, had a private jet, like, luxurious hotel rooms, like, all this th all this stuff. But he never had actual money. Like, he just got it and then would scam somebody and get their money. The reason I bring that up is just to say, like, it's easy to look like you're rich. You know, there's a lot of things you can do behind the scenes to look like you're rich. But when it comes to how much is actually in your bank account or, like, you know, how much cash you actually have, like, a lot of people don't have that. So he well, might I'm be saying, portraying that, but I, I don't know. If, if y'all are in his position... Are y'all not always looking for every girl you can get? All the money, all the cars. Are you not know, chasing he, that he life? He personally said, like, sex is boring to him. Yeah, he said he's done it so many times, he doesn't really care for it. Yeah. That, 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 that throws you off <laughs> a little bit. You know yeah, what I mean? That's like, a little that, weird. That should never be boring. Where you're I mean, maybe not never. I, could, I definitely understand what it's like, you know. You might go through a little bender and you having a crazy month, you knocking it down, and then the next couple weeks, you're chilling. It's not that deep. Chilling. <laughs> but for him to be saying, like, you know, I'm not with that, like, it's boring to me, that's a little extra. Right, have y'all have y'all seen the interview he did with uh, Full Sun? I didn't see it. You didn't I see saw it? a little bit of it. So let me get your opinion on this, right? He's talking about a girl, and he's saying... He doesn't hold hands in public, right? He did say that. I've seen that. You've seen the clip, right? <laughs> I'm not holding hands said, in public. He said, me and my girl, right, we're walking in public, and we're holding hands, Couple of guys want to come and attack me, and she's holding my hand, and I gotta get her off me. And what the? <laughs> you know, he, 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 Why are you laughing? Well, that's just goofy as fuck. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Nigga, to... just let go of her hand, yeah. bro. Yeah, man, spin it. <laughs> just that. Just let like, 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 you, bro. Like, off like it's a dog, bro. Like, <laughs> like bro, just let go. Yeah, yeah. Just let go. If, if you see them approaching, you just let go and you handle the business. But he's making that seem like you gotta shake her off you. Like, <laughs> I mean, she's gonna be gripping your hand tight, bro. She's gonna be scared, bro. She's gonna be holding you. Get off oh, oh, hey, hey. Right, but look, there is one part that I don't agree with him when it comes to the men woman uh, shit that we've been talking about and it's about him saying he would never let a woman drive his car like any car Man. I feel like bro come on now like well this, this is why I say that like women drive their kids to school like yeah right you know, like 
women know how to drive a car, bro. Yeah, that's kind of dumbing okay, women. Okay, well, hold on, but that's that's dumbing women down. For hold you on. to say you don't trust a woman to drive uh, you in a car, like that's dumbing them down, bro. That is a little disrespectful. Quick question. Quick question. He didn't specify what car it is, cause I mean. I wouldn't want to drive a Bugatti, Bugatti bro. That, no, n not a Bugatti, bro. We're talking about a... <laughs> minivan? Not a minivan, but let's just say if one of his... she had like a Mercedes like, S-Class or something. Yeah, you know Go what ahead. I mean? Drive like, it. A woman should be able to... I feel like a lot of the stuff he says, he specifies it to a single group of women, and those yeah. might be the groupies from the clubs. Yeah. That he yeah. looks at like, I wouldn't yeah. give you shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. but then people watch it and take it as like, you know, a woman that can actually handle their business, you know? Like, they even asked him on full send, and he was just camping a lot. They're like, so you wouldn't let uh, Danica Patrick drive your car? And, you know, she's a fucking professional race car driver. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, no. You know, it's like, come on, bro. She yeah. drives better than you. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, if I had a, you know, regular wife, I'm not going to let her drive, say, I have, like, a $3 million, like, gated manual Ferrari or something like that, bro. Well, here, here I'm pretty sure I remember yeah, where his conversation went with it. I'm pretty sure he was saying that if that girl does crash that car, she's not going to take responsibility for it, and she's not going to try to pay it back. So you're not going to let a random girl yeah. sit yeah, in see, your that's car. That's what you're saying with the groupies. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, in his head, he's talking about the groupies. He met them right. last night. Today, they want to drive his car, and to them, it's fun. They want to, you know... Hold a snapshot on one hand, drive the wheel, and boom, crashes it. Oh, I'm so sorry, and, and that's all you get out of it. But he just doesn't specify it like that, so it comes off as, oh, women don't know how to drive. Yeah. So he just needs to clear it up a little bit. And right. that's where his defense is that people take his shit and they'll clip out everything that he says. But nah, bro, I watched three hours of that full send interview, bro. Like, the, <laughs> you said what you said, yeah. bro. Nobody clips <laughs> shit out. You know what I mean? The, the, now, you know, now that he's canceled, the apologies, like, people clip it and they they make me look like the bad guy. No, bro, three hours, you were shitting on him pretty bad, bro. I mean, Jay, I mean... I mean, I guess it goes both ways, really. I mean, men are some pretty bad drivers. First time you ever picked me up, you got in an accident. That was my first time. That was literally my third time ever driving a car, though. You, the third time you ever third drove time? a car, you drove 20 minutes to my house to pick me up? I swear to God, bro. And you thought it was a good idea to get me in the car with you? That's yeah, right. Yeah. Hey, listen, bro. This, <laughs> is, me, this, yeah, this is exactly... He drove 20 minutes no, to your crib to This is exactly how it went. This how how old were you at this point? I was like 15, maybe 14, 15. I was 14. He was 15. Yeah, I was 15. So this is exactly how I learned how to drive a car. <laughs> One day I was like with my mom in the car. She's like, you want to drive? I was like, yeah, I want to drive. I like drove around the parking lot and I almost like I hit the wrong, like, I hit the brake or the gas instead of the brakes. And she's like, all right, enough for today. Like a month later, I asked my cousin, I was like, bro, like, can you teach me how to drive? And he took me, he's like, all right, let's go. Drove his car around the neighborhood. He's like, go on the road. Went on the road, drove like five minutes, came back. He's like, bro, you're good. <laughs> bro, next day. Next day, I hit him up. I was like, bro, can I take your car to go play soccer? <laughs> and that was the day I picked you up. <laughs> yeah. And the way that I the way that I crashed was like, I was like, I was going and this dude turned way too slow. So I was like, man, I'm about to just switch lanes real quick. And yeah, I so you already whipping it like yeah, <laughs> music jamming yeah. and shit, bro. Hell yeah, windows yeah. down and shit. Really. And I was like, let me just switch lanes real quick. Didn't check my mirror, didn't check my blind spot, just switched. Boom, a car came and I, I actually did a good job though. I, I dodged those because I, I hit this car and I was about to like go back and hit the other car that was turning and I like dodged and I was like in between both of them for half a second and then I went out of the road. You were like, in the car with them at this point? Yeah, that was probably one of the scariest moments of my life. I can't lie. <laughs> and then he, the craziest How shit. How fast were y'all going? I'm going like 40. The craziest thing I ever seen in my life when I looked over at him to see what he was doing in this commotion, straight face. Back and forth. Oh, so killed it. Bro. Killed it. I ain't gonna lie. You handled that shit good. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> the shit was scary. You stepped out. You're like, can I get your insurance and registration, no, please? I he didn't even out. have insurance. <laughs> I had my learner's permit. Like, I didn't even have a driver's license. I stepped out. This lady had her kids in the car. She was like, oh. my kids are in the car. Da, da, da. I she was, was showing like, you out? Yeah, I was literally like, uh, ma'am, I'm so sorry. Like, I just, like, started driving. I just got my driver's license. Like, the, the, the reason I got off is because, like, there was no scratch in her car. Like, our cars literally, like, touched, like, quick. And then I bounced off of her car. So her car was, like, okay. Yeah. That's why she was cool with, like, letting it. What'd you it, tell you the know? guy that you borrowed his car? Nothing. There was actually a scratch on his car. <laughs> but you didn't even mention it? Nah, bro. <laughs> Yo. Man, did, he ever, did he ever find out? Or? Bro, he mentioned it one time. He was like... Cause the scratch was there, and I like it was like one of those scratches. If you can, you can like wipe it off. You know what oh, I'm saying? Okay. So I like wiped it off. But if you really looked, you could see it. 
And one day he mentioned like something about the scratch on his car to me, and, and I was like, "Yeah, I don't know, bro." <laughs> like, it was my, it, my my cousin lived with me at the time, so like basically like my brother, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, of so, course, bro. Once a few days passes by and he's driven it too, then it's like, nah, bro. Was yeah. it you? Or maybe, like, you know, I don't <laughs> think it was knows, me. Was bro. it you type of deal? I know. <laughs> yeah, I think the first time I ever drove, I took my dad's car. I was still going to Harwood at the time, so I was in middle school. I was like 14. I took his car, it was like 6 in the morning. I had no business stealing my dad's car at 6 in the morning. But bro, where are you going so early, bro? I wasn't going nowhere. I just wanted to drive. Yeah. I took his car. I literally made it like, I, we was leaving his apartment. We took a left towards like Panda Express and all that. And it was like not even 30 seconds into me driving, bro. 6 in the morning, I don't know what this pickup truck behind me was doing going so fast. But I was trying to slow down and turn, and then it looked like he was slowing down. And me not being an experienced driver... I was like, damn, he's really not going to stop. Let me just try to make this turn real quick regardless. I ended up in a fucking woman's front yard, bro. I swear to God. I broke my dad's whole tire. Oh all that. <laughs> I literally just drove home, parked the car exactly where it was, went back to sleep, went back to sleep, <laughs> walked to school that day because I didn't want to ride that day. And my dad was suspicious. He's like, you don't want to ride? I was like, nah, we good. Literally, it was like first period, bro. I'm getting a call. Cuss that, what the fuck, this and that. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do to my car, Dad? I don't know. I, I must have some ops out there. They came pop your tire. It wasn't me. But yeah, no, I got chewed out for that. That was bad. Did bro. you ever tell him the truth? Hell no. He gonna know after this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny enough, but... He checks his IG, he's gonna see this. Nah, for sure. I, he, I could never tell him that some of his face, bro. That'd be, a, that'd be a bad... Uh, I'm trying to think know. if I have something that I kind of like really kept to myself, but I don't know, bro. Nah, you a pretty open book, I think. No, I'm pretty, oh, yeah, I'm pretty open, bro. Like, when I, I started smoking at a young age, like, say, like, I don't smoke anymore, but I used to smoke cigarettes and stuff like that. How old were you? Like, when I had my first cigarette, probably 16. What the fuck was you doing smoking cigarettes at 16, bro? I went to Bosnia, bro, and over yeah. there, you know, they started, like, <laughs> yeah, at 14, bro. Everybody smokes in here. Yeah, over there, everybody smokes. So, when I was 16, we went to Bosnia, and, you know, people are smoking, and I, I started smoking with them. I didn't really know even how to smoke a cigarette at that time. Right. But sure enough, like, when we came back to the States, 16, 17, I'm already, like, smoking one or two, or, like, when we go out or when you have a drink or two. Yeah. So, I feel like over there being in Europe, you know, you're already drinking at 16, 17, smoking cigarettes, this, that. Is that is true, bro. That yeah. life over there is different. I can't even lie. I've seen little 11-year-olds smoking cigarettes over there. Damn, bro, it's I mean, crazy. Bro, they they don't give a fuck. Yeah, they, they don't care, bro. Yeah. 14 years old, they're drinking beer and everything. Oh, yeah. When I was there last month, bro, I swear to God, 13, 14-year-olds drinking and smoking. Over there in Grown Albania? Man. Yep, 13, 14-year-olds drinking and smoking Grown already. It's a, a different kind of lifestyle. Yeah. I can swear to God. Being in Europe, that shit. Man. I mean, it's not just Europe. It's everywhere oh, but it's here. it's everywhere, bro. It's yeah. everywhere but here. Yeah. Here, everything is so strict, which is probably for the better. But if you want to do it, you're going to do it regardless. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even in England, uh, drinking age is 18. Yeah. Bro, even right. in Canada, bro. Everywhere like, but here. How you going to send me? I, yeah, I feel like 21 to drink, bro, is a little excessive. I think yeah. 18, you're like... If, if you yeah. can move out and live on your own, if you can go fight you wars. should be good, bro. Yeah, if if you you're in the if military, you know, uh, wait, at what age do you get drafted? So 18. let's say, or or no, at 19, right? Because you got to play one year of college football, right? Oh, drafted to the league. Into the league, right? Yeah. About like 19, 20. Yeah. Well, there's no way you're, you're signing a, a million dollar contract to you play. You can't even drink a beer? But you can't drink a beer? Literally. You Literally. can't go celebrate your $10 million contract you just signed? Kaminga on the Warriors, he's 19. They just won a chip. He can't even go to the club to celebrate with them. Like, isn't that crazy, that's bro? Some, that's some bullshit. That's some bullshit, bro. It's bullshit, well, I mean, bro. I don't know. Teach zone. I guess it's smart, you know, whatever. You don't want people drinking at a young age. Cool. But, like, at the end of the day, bro, it's some bullshit. Yeah. Because, you know, like, like they, do, they doing just fine over there, back in Europe, back in Mexico, Canada, all the... They're doing fine. Yeah. They're doing better, if not, you know what I mean. What's the what's the at, like places like Cali and stuff where you can smoke weed? What's the is it twenty one? Yeah, I think it's twenty one. I think it is twenty one. Twenty one. Yeah. And cigarettes, they moved to twenty one yeah. too now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Anything tobacco, twenty one. Even hookah, you have to be twenty one, bro. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Whoa, that is yeah, you didn't know that? I didn't know that. You have to be twenty one. Damn. That's, that's why me and him would go to the place in Arlington. Yeah, bro, but don't me, over. Bro, I used to finesse my way out of it. I was. Cause at the time it was still 18 and I was like 16 going to smoke hookah. Now I pull up and I didn't have an ID that was 18, but I had a tattoo already. 
So I was just shocked. I'd be like, bro, like, I'm 18. I don't have my ID with me. But, like, I got a tattoo where, like, I can't yeah. get this without being 18. And yeah. he would always let me go because of that, bro. He swore I was 18, bro. He swore. Damn. Hell yeah. He swore. But then, bro, don't, don't like, uh, in Dubai and stuff, bro, like, 14-year-old kids smoke hookah with their parents and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, bro. I mean. Yeah. I, I, like, I didn't think hookah was that bad. Like, well, you need to be 21 tobacco, for it. That's what it is. Yeah. It's just addictive, I guess. I don't know. Shit. I mean, Damn. speaking of, I'll go for a little hookah right now, guys. Right, I, I saw you had the thing back there. Yeah, bro, and it's honestly pretty cheap on the weekends. The hookahs? Oh, God, bro, you can go to uh, yeah. Turkish Cafe for hella good deals. No, I'm saying even here, they'll hook no, you like up. Here, at, 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 oh, bro. here? Yeah, yeah, it's oh. pretty cheap. <laughs> no, bro, yeah, here at the States. What kind though, of deals you cutting, bro? bro? I think it's like 25 oh, hookahs. Oh, to me nice. What kind of deals you cutting, bro? Oh, it depends, how, depends how many subscribers you get. Come on. <laughs> talk to me nice, bro. A thousand subscribers, you get who can open bar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll light it up a little later, bro. I didn't want it to smoke up the pot and stuff like that, but oh, we'll yeah, set yeah. the hook up a little sure. later. All right, switch topics a little bit, talking about hip-hop and music, bro. DJ Khaled just dropped God Did. Are you a fan or no? I, so he actually said it, some yeah. funny-ass shit about DJ Khaled. Oh, he hates DJ Khaled. Oh, yeah. You know he hates DJ Khaled, shit. bro. He said this He's man, DJ Khaled, guy. pays people to make beats. Pays people to rap on them and then sells it as his, as his own songs. I swear oh, 100%. God. Yeah, I do agree, bro. He don't DJ do shit. A cheat code. He does nothing. No, he does not. He's a cheat code, bro. Wait, all he says is, God did another one. Even his intro is becoming a little whack. They didn't believe in us. God Shut did. Shut the fuck up, bro. Like, come on, bro. Like, at least say, like, say it in a different... Like, I say, need to, like, because I, I might not just understand. I need to talk to him to understand what he does. Because from the outside looking in... He go to SoundCloud, he get some random ass dude beat for 2500 bring him in. He get one of his best friend rappers, bring him in, he said, rap on this beat, and then he puts it. Yep. And it's like, bro, I might be missing something, but I need to understand what the fuck he's doing on that. Yeah, no, That's honestly, it. yeah, he's just pulling, he's just pulling strings, pulling connections, just getting artists on the same songs. Yeah. Like, that, that Ye and Eminem song, bro, Eminem and Ye don't go together on a song. I don't know what the fuck yeah. he's thinking. You know? <laughs> And then that one that song with uh, with Jay Z and who else was on it? When Jay Z was at the end of it, he like he he literally rapped for like three and a half minutes straight. Lil Wayne, Rick uh, Ross, Jay Z, and John Legend. Yeah, they did. They did not need Rick Ross or Lil Wayne on that song. That should have been just a Jay Z song yeah, with John Legend on the hook. But yeah. you you can't lie to me. You can't tell me that Wayne's verse wasn't crazy. It was crazy. It's just but. that Lil Wayne's verse was good. It didn't deserve to get disrespected by Jay's. Uh, verse. By Jay Z going three minutes. Jay Z went yeah. three minutes, and everybody's so focused on Jay killing it, you just forgot that Rick Ross that and Wayne, Wayne went. Destroyed it. They, so that you know game. what I mean. That should have been left with uh, Rick Ross, Wayne, and John Legend alone, and give Jay Z his own song. Should've. But to just put Jay Z to kind of kill that track, and he murdered the track. But Lil Wayne and Rick Ross, they kind of get left forgotten yeah, a little bit on the track. That's what I try to remind people is like that song, Wayne. Like, Rick Ross did his thing, but Wayne, bro, he was fucking spinning, bro. Yeah, he killed like, that. Like, he was really going in, bro, and then Jay-Z comes in and kills it just because he always does, but... Bro, how'd y'all feel about the bar he threw at Meek Mill? What happened, bro? Oh, he threw a bar at Meek Mill? Yeah, he said he could never have beef with Meek Mill because he uh, freed him from, uh, from, prison. from prison. Yeah, I mean... Because remember Meek Mill left Rock Nation and stuff like yeah. that? You, you can't... I don't think Meek and Jay-Z... Uh, well, how do you ever. feel about Meek leaving Rock Nation, like... No offense, like, of course, maybe he left Rock Nation for a better deal, but can there be a better deal than having this guy get you out of prison? Yeah, come on, you, you gotta say it. For come life, on, bro, like, yeah. if this man got you out of prison, you, can, you can't be a couple years later, yo, Rock Nation, thank you, but this deal's just a little bit better. Bro, you're free. Yeah. You're, you still you're free. Prison, you know what I mean? So for him to, like, after all that, to go to somewhere else, bro, I'd kind of take offense to that, too, if I was Jay-Z. And they can say whatever they want. Yo, Jay-Z's a billionaire. He doesn't care. He doesn't this. People care, bro. Yeah. People care. Otherwise, if he didn't care, he wouldn't have put that bar in the song mentioning Meek's name. Yeah, he put that shit in there for a reason. Oh, yeah. For a reason. 100%. Nah, I mean, he, Meek's crazy for that. I ain't gonna, he Meek's his, crazy, bro. He owes his life. Yo, Meek's been falling off a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. I used to be a yeah. huge Meek Mill fan. Dream Chasers 3. We went to the Cowboys game against when, the Saints, remember? Yo, when and we listened to it on the way back. Dropped champion, uh, championship. It was crazy. Bro, and then after that, it just started going downhill. downhill. Yep. He started posting the wrong things, wearing the wrong things. And it was just like, bro, me, come <laughs> on, bro. Yo, no, Meek is we, hilarious. We know bro. exactly what picture we're talking about when he's sitting in the pool with the with French, the fries, 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 French fries, fries. Legendary, bro. His legs are built so, so. fucking funny to me, bro. <laughs> Bro, I don't even know what's wrong with his legs, but he got to do something about that. That shit is bad. Why do you eat french fries in a pool, bro? 
Chip out. Why it makes, makes no sense. The water and not do anything about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Probably. That was the biggest menace energy I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, he's like, a menace. I ain't gonna lie. But the thing is, like, Meek Mill, bro, I want him to, like, I, I want the old Meek back. You know what I mean? Like, how he, I miss the old he went meat. up to uh, Funk Flex and dropped the freestyle. Or even, like, when he beats with Drake, bro, I, I was on Meek's side the whole time. Like, yo, Meek, let's go. Like, get in your grind mode. Let's kill it. Let's do this. Hell let's yeah. do that. And he was just kind of like, he wasn't giving us the energy of the meek we know. Yeah. Then later on, he came and he dropped like War Pain, which was, he killed it on War Pain, right? But it was already a little too late. We needed a response to back to back and the response needed to be something to kill it. Yeah. Of course, there's no beef with them now. It's all good. But I'm just saying from a fan point, especially me being a Meek Mill fan at that point, I wish he would have went a little bit harder because the, the ball was in his court. I don't know. I don't. This is a little hot take. I don't really know if it's a hot take. I don't think Meek's made a bad song or album. I think all of his shit is good, but I think he's made some bad choices. I ain't gonna lie to you. True. Like, yeah, that's, I, I, I can agree with his that. His music is spot on. Bro. Did y'all see Little Baby's uh, Amazon uh, Prime documentary that he has called Untrapped? By, of of Little Baby? Mm-hmm. No, I didn't see that. No, I, I didn't really meet one. I'm gonna watch that. that. Oh, it's, it's so good. Yeah. Like, it literally shows him from day one to now and, like, his grind and hustle and things like that. Yeah, wasn't that. he, like, a millionaire before oh, he even oh, started rapping? he was rapping? making crazy money Selling before drugs, Young bro. Thug said he would literally... <laughs> you said he did what? Selling hella drugs, bro. What are you... Come on. Baby. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah. You gonna put that in the air like that? I mean, it's Allegedly. <laughs> oh, is, is that the no, one where no, I saw no, the... not even allegedly, bro. It's on Amazon. Like, if he said yeah. it, yeah. bro. So why are we gonna act like it's allegedly, bro? Like, we're, not, we're not DJ Vlad. <laughs> yeah, DJ Vlad is the fan, yeah. DJ Vlad's I a fan. Like, so you. you handed it to him, right? So you, now, that, that gun that was used to shoot yeah, like Vaughn. Your fingerprints are still on You it, gave right? it to him. <laughs> like, come on, bro. Yeah, bro. DJ Vlad. Crazy. No offense, bro, but DJ Vlad does. Shit was crazy. Really Fed vibes. And he be disrespecting the people he be talking about too. Like, oh, hundred, bro. That shit is crazy, bro. I don't. <laughs> DJ I Vlad trying to get bro. them Rico cases stacked up. Not for real, right, bro. bro. No, he be trying to put it in the air, bro. It's crazy. Bro. I, can't I guarantee that. you there's going to be a documentary like down the road, whether it's like five years, ten years, about DJ Vlad being undercover. Some crazy to, like, shit. get all the information he Even can. his voice. And the fact that he's never, never like, in the... Himself, right? yeah. That's some crazy yeah, shit. Yeah, he never shows crazy himself. Shit. Yeah, like, why, what do y'all, why hide? You know wait, what? have... Has, well, he never has, shows himself? Has a picture no. of him ever been released or some shit? Oh, I mean, of course, bro. He's done interviews. There, oh. like he's, he's been on Breakfast Club. He's done an interview with uh, the brilliant idiots Charlemagne and Andrew Schultz like a couple months ago. So he's out there. I just don't get why hide behind the camera like go out there have a one-on-one conversation with the artist and stuff like that but the reason he's hiding behind the camera is because the shit he asks the people that don't agree with he doesn't want the people when they see him out in public to kind of see the face and put the two and two together right because he does ask some bullshit questions sometimes yeah see i don't even know what he looks like i would love to know what he looks like i ain't gonna lie i mean i don't know i I just the voice he has i'd love to put it to a face you know He'd be, he'd be saying but, some out of pocket But that shit, would bro. be crazy, though, if down the road they do get a documentary out of him actually being a fed. <laughs> that, that, that'd be crazy. I'm telling you, bro. I he's, doubt he's wired or something. Or, it doesn't have to be wired. He's recording that. Like, yeah, he records live, it. Pretty much. But yeah. some of the questions he asks, bro, are government-style questions. If you're a rapper and, like, you did used to do that stuff, you know not to say shit like that. I yeah. think he literally starts, like, back in the day, he would start some of his interviews with, like, please list your full government name. Some shit like that. What the bro. fuck? Yeah. Uh, hey, can I get your social as well? Like, what bro, the hell, bro? You. Oh, that man Vlad, bro. I don't know. He's like, that one, he's like that one guy. Who's the guy that interviews rappers that knows everything about Nardwar? him, bro? Adam 23. Yeah, yeah. Nardwar. Oh, Nardwar. Yeah. Nardwar knows like everything Nardwar. about every rapper, bro. It's insane. I've never heard of him. Nardwar, that guy that he's like The white guy, he has like curlyish hair a little bit. He's weird as hell. He's always like... Doo, 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 doo. You yeah, don't know who that is? Wrong. I don't know where he's from, but this man knows, like, he literally, who did he interview when he brought up uh, his rap name from when he was a kid? For, no, not Pharrell. It was, um, um, damn, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't about remember though. who it was, but he literally went up to a rapper and was interviewing him, and he's like, so what do you think about this name? And he, like, said the name, and it was the rapper's name when he was from, like, seventh grade. Yeah, like. And it was just between his friends. Yeah, he knows, he knows it all. He knows bro. everything. I might have seen him like once or twice, but I, I didn't. Oh, oh, I know now. I know now. Guy. He's weird, right? Yeah, he's, he's weird. Yeah, as he's like super weird, but he he's just he's always wearing some out of pocket shit. Yeah, but but he knows yeah. things like that you wouldn't think he would know about. Like even the rappers, like bro, how the fuck do you know that? Yeah, his interview yeah. with Lil Uzi was actually Uzi was like, what the fuck? If you could put the energy out there in the air, who's one person you'd want to interview? Personally, I mean, I don't know. Just from like having a biased soccer background, I would love to get like. 
somebody like, you know, Messi, Ronaldo, some shit like that. But if, if it was like a, the music industry, I'd love to talk to Wayne, bro. I so swear Wayne, to God. As far as soccer, if you have to pick between Messi, Neymar, or Ronaldo, who would you want to sit down with? Damn, Neymar's life does sound more interesting. I ain't yeah. gonna lie. Yeah, Neymar sounds like it'd be Neymar a sounds like an interesting life. Yeah, nah, life. for sure. Yeah, so what's up with you and your sister? <laughs> yeah, I need to know. I need hey. an- Neymar. I bro, need I'm not gonna lie. answers I would now, love, bro. I would love to interview Zlatan. That'd be a dope Zlatan interview. Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I interview Zlatan. He interviews you, bro. Yeah, no, no, no. Oh, <laughs> Zlatan yeah, comes to your house, that's and that's it's his house. That's the new Chuck Norris, bro. When he's on your podcast, it's his podcast. Let's get Zlatan. Come interview us. We'd love to have you come on our show. Talk a little bit. To his show. His show. Yeah, yeah, to his show. To his show. Um, this is your show for the day that you're here. This would be your show. Would be our guest. Come talk to us or let us talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> However, However you want it, man. We'll yeah. you, you want to do it. We got you. <laughs> nah, no, seriously. He's but, adult, bro. Oh, yeah, bro. He is. For I sure. Love the he guy. up there. I mean. What about you, Ennis, as far as uh, athletes? If I had to interview anybody, I'm not going to lie. I would love to interview Derrick Rose. What would you ask Derrick Rose, bro? What do you want to know about him? Well, the thing is, I mean, he did grow up Southside Chicago. Did live, I mean, he's just the... MVP. MVP, youngest MVP. Just, I want to, exp- I want to, I want him to explain how it felt of being that kid that grew up in Chicago, got drafted by Chicago, was killing it, youngest MVP, and then you know after all the injuries and everything, like I want to know what his mind went through to go yeah, through true. something yeah, like true. that. True, because I feel like some of those injuries, like the player that we're used to seeing on TV, just disappears to us and he's out, right. like out for season, and we don't see him. But he still has a whole life, like recovering, battling yeah, through true. his demons. And then the and day he like got that, drafted by, uh, he got uh, traded like by Chicago. Like, what was it like? Because grew up in Chicago, true. drafted by Chicago, first pick, having an amazing career. The whole city loves him. Everybody loves him. Then injuries, and then just done. No, gone. that would yeah. be a good one. What about you, Jordan? You have an athlete that you'd want to sit down with and just kind of talk a little bit one on one. You know, Alfonso Davies. From Bayern Munich. Yeah. Right? You know, yeah. I, used to, I used to play soccer with him in Canada. Like, Did I kind of grew up with him. Like, oh, wow. So I would sit down with him because, like, I obviously I knew him when he was a kid. Right. And, like, I moved to Texas in, like, when I was, like, 14. So that was before he went to Whitecaps Academy. And then wow. so I would just be like, like, how was it from that point, you know? Cause, like, Could have been you. Yeah, because, like, so what happened was I lived in Edmonton in uh, Alberta. Uh-huh. I don't know if you ever heard of it. And yeah, of course. The Whitecaps... They literally came to our city and just picked up like 12 people like the year after I moved to Texas. Picked up like 12 kids that were like the best kids. Took them all to the Whitecaps Academy and then like Alfonso was just like the best out of all of them. Made it out of there, went to the MLS, had like three seasons in the MLS, popped off his last season, got sold to Bayern. Had like a season doing nothing. Next season, the left back got injured. He got a chance, took his chance, blew up. Uh, FIFA XI of the year, like... You know, I mean, he's literally living the dream. Like, yeah. uh, like you're a little yeah. kid, you want to be a pro soccer player? He did it he's all. He's living the he, dream, bro. So that I that goes to ask me, like, how do you two feel feeling like you could have been in those shoes? No, I mean, me personally, like, I know for a fact I would have at least went to the Whitecaps Academy. Like, I know that for a fact. Right. Well, now, in terms on? of, like, standing out there, like, obviously I have 100% confidence in myself. And... Like, I played soccer, after I moved from Canada, like, I already knew I wasn't going to go pro because my parents never supported me with soccer. Like, they already told me, they were like, you're not going to go pro, like, going pro is not a good idea, da 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 So I already knew that wasn't going to You had happen. no support. So, like, my mentality was already, like, I'm just going to play for fun, and if something happens, something happens. But if I was, like, in the academy, my mentality is completely different. I'm like, I'm going pro. Like, right. I'm here. Do you feel like I'm the parents' the support plays a big deal oh, on what kids going up these days? Role. What plays like a that? huge role? Especially in the U.S. where, like, it's so hard to get into it. Like, if you're in Europe yeah. and you play good, somebody somewhere is going to want you to go pro. They're going to support you. But yeah. here, your parents got to drive you 40 minutes to practice. They have to pay gotta for pay everything. pay for you to play. Got to drive you to the game. Now, what's, like, All the that. biggest difference between, like, your parents, let's say, supporting you compared to your parents just always tapping you on the back whether you did good or bad? Because, you know, you got some parents, like, you might have had a, a shitty game, played horrible, and, you know, there's some, some things that they could tell you, like, yeah, Yo, you got to do a little bit better here. You got to improve on this, where they're just, like, you know, they're just kind of clapping, giving you the yeah. award every single time. Is that still good support, or should there be kind of like a fine average where it's like support, but correct me when I'm wrong so I can get better too, or should you just leave all that to the coaches? That's always been my thing with soccer. Not just soccer, anything in life. I strongly disagree with the whole patting somebody on the back thing. If you fuck up, bro, 
If somebody tells you it's alright, you'll get them next time. You gonna fuck up again, bro? Because you know the response you're gonna get after you fuck up again is gonna be another. It's alright. Get them next time. Yeah. If somebody fucking yells at you and tells you what you just did was some bullshit, you're not doing that shit again, bro. Like, or you're gonna at least try your hardest to get better at it if you really care about what yeah. you're doing. You're yeah. gonna be like, all right, bro, I got chewed out for fucking up. Let me fucking fix that and not make that mistake again. Yeah. So that whole patting people on the back shit, maybe at like the age of six, seven, like whatever, bro. Once you're like four, like 13, 14, that shit has to go out the window, bro. It has to. Yeah. Like all those mistakes gotta stop. I feel that. I mean, from the, I agree with that, like just in general, but from the athlete's point of view, like your parents, like, first of all, if you are trying to get your kid to go pro in soccer and you're, you don't even understand soccer, like, leave it to the coaches, you know? Don't just be saying shit. I hate people who are just like, oh, like, you need to switch the ball more or just saying shit, yeah, like, for sure. just to say something, you know? Like, not even, right. like, something that you need to hear. But, like, if it was me and, like, I'm raising my son, like, I know how to play soccer, like, I'm definitely, I think it's better if I was there, like, supporting him and being like, hey, like, you did this good, you did this bad, rather than just being like, hey, you did good, like, keep going out there keep trying you know like especially if you want them to go pro if you just want them to have fun and just do something just to be out then it's not that deep you don't need to be like yeah. oh go go run or go train go do this like pushing them but if it's yeah, like my son's in soccer and he's uh he's been playing for like five six years now and he's still very young yeah he plays select and i try to kind of push him to always be the best he could be but yeah. i try to kind of find like a middle ground where I, because it's like I could easily always criticize what he did wrong, especially yeah. at a young age. Yeah. I'm only watching the things that he did wrong. He could have done ten things good, good, but the five things that he did wrong, I'm upset because to me it feels like it's simple. Yeah. Right. So because you're watching little kids and any little move he makes, I'm like, yeah, you should have done this, you could have done that. But to him at that age, he's playing with people that are his height, his size, so it's a lot harder for him than it is for, yeah. from what I'm seeing from my point of view. Yeah. You know? So I try to kind of find a middle ground where I'll always tell him like two things he did good and then one thing he did bad. Yeah. So it's kind of like a middle ground where it's like, man, right. you did great. That was a great goal. That was a great play. But hey, also, you remember when you fell back there and you slipped? Next time do this a little bit differently yeah. here so you can correct that where you kind of find that middle ground. Yeah. So you're not always yeah. chewing them out. But at the same time, you're not always just kind of like kissing ass either. You yeah, know? yeah. I mean, I think that's a good place to be at. Because, like, I know for me growing up, like, I just loved playing soccer. And I was just, like, always trying to learn, trying to be better than what I was. And I like when people tell me, like, hey, like, you did this wrong. Try to do it like this. Because then I'm like, okay, like, I'm going to be thinking about the game more, you know. And that, I right. felt like that helped me grow. So, yeah, I think that's a good way to 100%. approach it. Yeah, no, I've also learning wise no matter what it is you do you really have to study it yeah like i don't really you know how many people i know that play soccer football basketball and they're like i don't watch games yeah or, it's, it's like what the fuck like yeah, how are you gonna learn anything you've never seen people that have done it before do it yeah. you know yeah because like everything that's been done before you learn it and make it your own way exactly. make it your own thing exactly. and that's whenever it becomes special mm -hmm. but like everybody that's done it and made it an original foundation it was great then but now whenever you take their foundation and build something on top of it, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be the best. That's why I'm so confused when people are like, yeah, I don't watch film. I don't watch. You know how many hours I spend on YouTube watching like Messi, Ronaldinho, fucking Maradona, all of them, you know? That man Ben White on Arsenal said he doesn't watch soccer. That's why he fucking sucks. Wow. Yeah, damn. God damn it, Benjamin. Like, oh, you have to watch. Yeah. You have to study. You got to yeah. watch film, bro. That's right. the best way that shows you when you're on the field and your adrenaline's rushing and these players are moving all around. Well, when you watch film, you see from outside of the box and you learn, okay, one, two, three, right? Yeah. You connect all the dots. Next time you're on the field, your head is thinking what you saw on film, not what you see in, in real life right away. And that's that what, film study is going to help you perform better on field. That's right. what they did with Kyler Murray's new contract. He was playing too much Call of Duty when it would come out and they noticed his stats would drop. This is crazy how the NFL does research on this shit, huh. like your team. Like they noticed when Call of Duty would come out, his stats would drop. So now in his contract that he just signed, he has to watch like, I think it's like five or six hours of film a week. I mean, for how much money they're paid, if, like if it's part yeah. of your job, you got to yeah. do your job. Yeah. Right. You get paid that much money, like, bro. You have the, like you, you have the guy from Arsenal, he's getting paid, but he ain't watching film. Oh, that's Arsenal's problem. <laughs> that is yeah. our, that's why he don't play. <laughs> but see, soccer and football are completely different because like you need to know what the other team plays are when you're a quarterback so you can adjust. But in soccer, like, it's not like that stiff. Every you know? scenario is different. Yeah, every scenario yeah. is different. There's never the same scenario twice. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. It literally is never the same. Yeah. That's why, I like, you got to watch film because you have to know, like, 
whenever you're in a situation in soccer, you have to think, like, whenever somebody was in a similar situation, they yeah. did this. Yep. Now that I'm in this particular situation, I'll do what they did my own way, and I'll make it out of this situation. Yeah. But that's just, I don't know. It gets real deep whenever you talk about getting better, no matter sure. what it is you do. Yeah. Anyways, I feel like we had a good conversation, right? Yeah. Everything went well, sure. Jordan. Thank oh, yeah. you for stopping by yeah, talking and having coming you, man, to our sure. show. And, you know, we had a good conversation, touched a lot of good topics, talked about Andrew Tate, talked about Jake Paul, talked a little bit about Meek Mill, Rick Ross, Kanye, Jay-Z. I mean, we pretty All much touched Cali. as many topics as we possibly could. Right. Uh, we'll do it again next week and talk a little more. 100%. All right, 100%. 100%. Man. Hey.